Hello beautifuls, this is Arami here, and welcome back to Seduce Me 2. Um, we are here with Matthew, awake now and not being possessed by his father. Diana sighed and wheeled the orb away in the, into the air before looking to well us. Well then, I've spent enough time fixing this. Now I must prepare for a war. Excuse me. Diana nodded to us and left without another word. Matthew, however, grinned at me and nuzzled my forehead. I guess I really did need saving after all. I shook my head, knowing that was not true. I was there to help, not there to save. I kissed Matthew's cheek and smiled. I only helped you do it on your own. You broke his control over you, not me. We chuckled for each other, slowly standing happy to be in each other's arms, at last. James, however, stepped forward with a frown, causing Matthew to release me. Matthew, I apologize for not being a proper brother for you and treating you with the respect you deserved. I would never want you to not trust me or the others. In agreement, the other brothers stepped up and nodded, ashamed as well. Matthew stared at all of them in shock before kissing my cheek and stepping towards them. Hey, hey. You're my brothers. We're supposed to support and protect each other, right? <laughs> this is so adorable, it's making me sad. <laughs> All five of them smiled at each other as I felt myself needing to rest once more. I held the wall slightly, and maintaining my balance, I shook my head and looked up at the brothers. Seeing them happily rekindle the brotherly love the, the, the had, they had before, I looked to the wives, winking before sneaking out. Matthew needed some time with his brothers to settle some differences. I would wait for him in the room. I finally returned to our room and flopped onto the bed, letting the events of them of my time in the Abyssal Plains replay in my mind. I had been trapped here, and soon enough I was about to go marching into battle against the Demon Lord for my freedom. The more I thought about it, the more surreal the feeling became. I was going to be in a room, meeting a powerful advers adversary face to face, and set myself free of the curse he brought down upon me. What made my head spin was the fact that Matthew had been under the influence of his father and mother's control. It was beyond imaginary, yet it happened. I couldn't believe it, but at the same time I had not I had not no, I had that not choice no choice but to come and come to terms with it. As Matthew entered the room at last, I smiled and stood, walking over and wrapping my arms around him as he returned my embrace. You're the best person in the entire universe. You know that? Nope. And you t <laughs> you are too, Matthew. We held each other, looked in, locked in the s locked in silence, and unable to say anything more. We had been in a heavy predicament, and we escaped. Sure, the demon lord may have still had some sway over Matthew, but it wasn't enough to control him now. All we could do in the moment was hold each other and listen to our synchronized heartbeats. As the thought of tomorrow danced in my head, I began to fear it even more. Was I ready to go into battle? Was Matthew? Or any of us for the matter? We were about to walk into the final battle of a world war. Would we survive? Would I, see, would I live to see Matthew afterward and feel his embrace again? Tomorrow brought too many questions to think about and I became frustrated and scared. Uh, why would we sleep? I obviously chose to make love with Damien, so why not make love with t to Matthew? Go ahead. <laughs> My character needs it. I needed to hold him and treat the night like it was the last night of the world. Tomorrow was unpredictable, but tonight was guaranteed. I guided Matthew back and sat on the bed, looking up at him before slowly easing out with my shirt. At least she didn't stay strip, because that word, you guys know, I should uh, I always giggle at it. Mm, I'm sure. Looking, <laughs> locking eyes with him as I slowly began to Okay, strip for him. There I go. His breath became slightly hitched as he watched, obeying my silent demand to keep his eyes on me. As I finally became bare from the waist up, I pressed my hands onto the bed and slid back, letting my legs up onto the mattress and holding them out for him to do the honors. I tilted my head, letting him get the pictures as I dangled my legs out for him. Wait, dangled her legs out for- what? I- I- uh, Matthew let out a shy sigh before nodding and biting his lower lip and crawling up onto the bed, grasping my clothes and sliding them off my legs. At least he- no strip word, leaving them completely bare for him. As he tossed my clothes to the side, I settled back onto the bed and held out my arms to him. Come here. Obediently, Matthew followed, kneeling between my legs and pressing his hands on both sides of my body, staring deep into my eyes and making me become lost in his gorgeous blue irises. I slowly danced my arms up over his shoulder and felt his skin slightly heat up beneath my hands and making, making me slightly smirk up at my loving incubus. I'm all yours. I want you to take all of me. 
The kind of desire that flashed in his eyes made my body shudder. My shudder. Not body shoulder, what the hell? Even before his enthrallment began to settle into my body and completely encase my core in desire. I don't deserve you. Wow. Our, our words became muffled, lost in the air as he pressed his lips hard against mine and quickly began to discard his jeans, joining me in my bare exposure and taking in my scent as I relished feeling his skin against mine. However, what surprised me was him turning me over and wrapping his arms around my waist, hugging me back against his chest. I took the hint to grip onto the bedpost and arched my back for him, impatient. Then pleasure racked through me and I became a moaning mess in his arms. The bed rocked hard against the wall as I dug my nails into the wood. Into the wood. Oh, Ew, do you guys hate that? Okay, you know, I'll... I'll yeah. You guys should know what I'm trying to go to, Ertz. But I'm not trying to ruin the moment for you guys, so. And took in his love with our lovemaking. My heart sung Arias? 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 Of love as my core screamed songs of ecstasy for, this, for the man taking me. This was indeed our last night in the demon world, so we will relish the feeling of magic and lust melting around us as we soared into euphoria. Even as we angled ourselves to lock lips, our inhi inhibi inhibitions. And. I hate this word, became lost in the air. We became rap rapid and roared in the pleasure that rushed through us, quickly washing through our peaks once, twice, three times. We didn't care to count farther, losing our senses within our arms. As our ride eventually had to end, we settled onto the mattress, panting and gasping. The natural musk of our sweat danced in the air as we slowly cuddled together and relaxed into the sheets beneath our bodies. I was dizzy, swimming in oceans of joy and loving, and, and pff, loving, McLovin, and love within Matthew's arms, causing me to nuzzle my head beneath his kiss, oh, beneath his, and kiss over his Adam's apple. I'll always be here, in your arms. And I'll be here in yours, I promise. <sighs> so cute. A sense of hope and courage wrapped around us that night, laced with our undying commitment for each other. We would survive. We would be okay. I felt safe in Matthew's arms, and I'm sure he felt safe in mine. We would return to the human world and be okay. Tomorrow would decide everything. Alright. When Man. you get to the castle, I will be fighting one-on-one on one with the Demon well. Lord. If something should happen to me, then I need you to take over. Man. Well, I'm nervous. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna be fighting for our lives right now. Matthew wrapped an arm around my waist and turned my body to him, hugging me closely. Hey, everything will be okay, alright? I listened to him and speak before nodding. Okay, we already read this part. Cool. She said that we're all fighting for freedom and that she'll lead us to it. Is that it? Pretty much. Everything else she's saying is just to rile everyone up for battle. Everything. Are we good with our sneak attack plan? We've done what we can. Remember your surroundings and protect each other. Be careful, all right? Make sure you stay safe. Princess, brother, we'll see you in the end. We have faith in you. You'll make it there, and we'll return to the human world soon. Kick his dead body a couple times for me, all right? Right in the head. We'll be right here rooting for you and watching your back, okay? We'll win this. We know we can. You can do this. We'll see you soon, okay? All right. The journey was surprisingly fast going through the trees. The sound of war crashes beside us outside of the tree line, causing me to cover my ears a bit from the volume, but I shook my head and pressed forward, now wanting to become distracted. The goal was to get to the castle. I had to focus. Before I could, however, I skidded to a stop, seeing imps appear from the distance and rush towards us. As my incubus came up behind me and spotted the imps, he prepared himself to attack, but I placed my hands on his arm, stopping him. I got this. I walked forward and formed my weapon, letting it shine brightly in the darkness of the forest around us and temporarily blinding the imps ahead of us. My hands formed the guitars I had trained with, feeling their weight in my hands as the blade glimmered a lavender glow of energy. I swung my hands a bit, wait, recalling, I was gonna say reteaching, recalling the reach and balance of the weapons in my hands as we prepared to attack. The imps who were blinded by the light only for a moment looked back at me and stared as I took note of the weapon I had possessed. With about a cry, I rushed forward, taking advantage of their blank state. 
insert awkward screen. <laughs> I arched my back to the side and jabbed forward, running my blade through the face of an imp before slicing through it and spinning around to slash through the imp inside me, opening two large gashes in his chest through his ribs and lungs. Yeah! <laughs> that sounds funny. The imps fell as the others became shell-shocked at sight. It must have been a big surprise to see a human cut down two of their number, but I wasn't in the mood to let them recover. My body quickly turned in front of another imp as I swung my weapon once again, slicing open his throat. With a bubbly cry, he fell as well as I rushed forward again towards the castle on carrying. The remaining young imps became to quake and step back in fear, most likely never expecting to see a human d decimate their companions. I wasn't so friendly and merciful, especially in this war. As I lunged forward again and skewered through another imp, hearing the steel of my weapon breaking through his body. My incubus, despite probably being surprised at my carnage, followed as I continued forward, fighting through every imp that came, on, came in our way. I had lost count of how many crossed me, but I didn't care. All I cared about was getting to the castle. By the time we reached the end of the forest, there were a slew of dead bodies behind me. I stood at the tree line, panting and feeling waves of adrenaline and a lack of energy run through my veins. I panted for air, slowly focusing on calming down as my energy quickly depleted from its adrenaline-filled high. The weapon in my hand quickly vanished, no longer able to maintain its form without my energy. That was all I could do before my energy was was expended and a wave of exhaustion broke throughout my body. Alright. Whoa! Are you alright? Huh? I looked up to see Matthew staring down at me, fear and concern dancing in his eyes. We were safe for a moment, so I merely smiled up at him with a nod. I'm fine. I promise to protect you like you protect me. Matthew let out a small laugh before pressing his forehead against mine. What would I ever do without you? I hugged him back, feeling a relief that we had finally arrived at the castle and were about to rush inside. As we slowly pulled away, Matthew lifted me up and hoped me to my feet. Come on! You ready? I nodded, shaking off the exhaustion from my mind. I was ready to end this. I looked up at the castle gates and felt a rush of determination run through me. Let's go finish this! With that, Matthew and I rushed forward into the castle. The final battle had begun. We quickly rushed into the Demon Lord's castle, desperate to get inside and aid Diana in fighting the Demon Lord. As we rushed in, however, we stopped to see Diana and the Demon Lord setting off. Diana had her saber tightly gripped in one hand while she glared daggers into her opponent. The Demon Lord carried a large smirk on his face as he stood on the dais of his throne. Dais? Dais? As Matthew and I entered, his smirk grew that much wider. Matthew, however, seemed to care more about the woman kneeling on the ground beside the Demon Lord with her hands on her knees, frowning at him. Oh, it's his mom! Mother! Ah! There he is! My son! Get him out of here now! What? I stared at Diana as she continued to face the Demon Lord. What was she talking about? The Demon Lord simply laughed and pointed at Matthew. Well, what are you waiting for? Claim your throne! What are you talking- At that moment, Matthew's body pulsed with a faint blue light. He curled over his body and gripped his head, digging his fingers into his hair. Matthew! Matthew, what's wrong? <laughs> Get him out of here! I rushed to Matthew. Mm, I was gonna say Matthew, cause <laughs> all right. Matthew, now terrified to, to what was happening. Before I could place my hands on his shoulders, however, Matthew vanished into a dis dis dissipating afterimage. Huh? <coughs> the sound of cl steel clashing caused me to turn and see Matthew and Diana clashing swords. Diana gritted her teeth as the Matthew glared into her gaze. Damn it, fool! <laughs> I said, take your throne. Matthew's body pulsed again, forcing him to push against Diana and send her flying back to stand by beside me. As Diana reached me, she moved a hand in front of me, blocking me from Matthew. Matthew? What? Matthew? What's going on? Matthew looked up- uh, obviously he's possessed again. Matthew looked up at me and Diana, his expression twitching from trying to maintain control of himself. His eyes flickered between blue and gold as he gripped to his sword tightly. I wasn't afraid of him, so I stepped out from behind Diana and walked towards him, holding my hands out. Matthew, it's okay. You can overcome this. Stay back. I ignored him and continued to walk forward, need needing him to be okay. Whatever spell the demon lord had on him wasn't powerful enough to, enough to consume him. I need to break its entire hold on him once and, at once and for all. Fight it, Matthew. You're strong enough to beat this. Matthew dropped his sword and gripped his head, digging his fingers into his hair and curling over himself. He scratched his nails over his horns, angry and aggravated. I 
don't want to hurt you. You won't, Matthew. I know you won't. At last, I stopped in front of Matthew's body. I gently tilted his head up and cupped his face in, front, in both of my hands. His face was warm from the mental struggle as his eyes flickered between blue and gold. I trusted him, though. Matthew loved me, and his love would crash through his, the spell. Let me help you. I quickly leaned in and kissed Matthew's head, making him gasp and freeze within my arms. I felt myself slowly drain of my remaining energy, but I didn't care. Matthew needed it more than me, and if I was able to free him, then I would. The air around us became lighter and easier to breathe, even as we separated. I stared into Matthew's eyes, seeing him stare wide-eyed at me in shock. They were complete, completely painted in gold, causing my heart to tighten for a moment. Did he break it? Enough of this! Kill her! As the demon lord's voice reverberated in the air, a large sword embedded itself into the demon lord's stomach. Oh snap! What the? Matthew looked back to his father, his hand extended out towards him. As his eyes finally regained the, their ocean blue color, my heart began to jump in ecstatic joy. Look at his pose! His pose is badass too, just like Damien's. Matthew had broken free from the spell. Fr from the spell his father trapped him under. How can this be? Impossible! You expected me to follow your orders, you sick bastard! I stared wide-eyed as Matthew turned around and summoned, summoned a new weapon into his fist. A dark blue aura emanated from his body, flickering like flames as he stared at the demon lord down. You will never convince me to kill the ones that I love. Insolent brat! The demon lord gritted his teeth before sharply extending his hand towards Matthew's mother. We could only watch as red ethereal chains shot out from the demon lord's back towards Azira. Azira? 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 That became on her form and crushing her. No! Stop it! Your what energy, the hell? Woman. What? He's gonna use her right now? How should that make her react? Red lightning began to sh surround, surround and shock Azira? Bound form. The red energy traveled through the chains holding her hostage and into the demon lord's body, making him glow a terrifying blood color. A large sword formed in the demon lord's hand, arcing with the red lightning. Matthew's first sword, which was impaled in the demon lord's stomach, crumbled into ash and fell to the floor, leaving a black leaving a black scar mark. The demon lord's eyes, however, fixed themselves on Matthew's form with a deadly intent. I'll kill you! Faster than I had thought imaginable, Matthew stepped forward and vanished, only to reappear in front of the Demon Lord with his sword held high. As Matthew swung his weapon down, however, the Demon Lord held out his hand and forced Matthew back with a burst of red energy. Matthew skidded backwards, crossing his sword over his body to shield himself from the blast. As the energy faded, the Demon Lord's lips curled into a crazed smirk. Then come, little boy! Show me what you can- The Demon Lord stopped, staring at Matthew as his body froze. I hitched my breath. What was happening? Enough! Everyone turned their heads towards Matthew's mother, seeing her hold the chain that connected her with the demon lord in a tight grip. Her body was shaking, but the rage in her eyes couldn't make any demon fall to, fall to their knees. I will not let you hurt my son! Before the demon lord could turn and do something, a large bolt of blue energy shot through the chain and into the demon lord's back, causing him to arch back and scream in pain. <laughs> I bet that was pretty awkward for him to record that line. <laughs> Matthew grabbed onto me and covered me with his body as Diana block blocked her face with her arms. The magic was so powerful the room began to shake violently. I watched from the cracks of Matthew's arms as dark black and red energy traveled down the chain from the demon lord into Azira's body, making her body pulse and grow in power. The demon lord, however, became weaker and surprisingly became more, more, much more frail. You are my... I am not yours! Any longer! Another heavy blue bolt rushed through the chain into the demon lord's body, causing a splash of blood to just to jut from the demon lord's mouth. Matthew finally stepped away from me and began to walk at the, began to walk at the demon lord, forming a sword in his hand. As he did, the demon lord collapsed onto the floor, and his hand and knees were on his hands and knees and growled animalistically at the sun. It's over. What surprised me was the smirk that grimaced that grimaced. What? That grace, not grimace, grace the demon lord's bleeding lips and the chuckle that erupted from it. You are indeed the perfect son. Without another word, Matthew raised his sword and rammed it into the demon lord's neck, effectively pinning him to the ground and killing him. A bully cry of pain barely escaped the demon lord's mouth as his eyes glazed over, dead. 
My heart felt major relief, shaking a bit as as a weight lifted off of my soul. The demon lord was dead at last. I was free and we could go home now. To think his oops, own oops, wife. Oops, Diana spat to the side, catching my to attention. To think his own wife and son would be the ones to kill him. What have I been doing for the past ten years? Yeah, Diana, what, what have you been doing? But this is where we're going to stop for today's episode. I hope you guys are enjoying, and I'm pretty... My timer won't shut up, but I'm pretty sure next episode is the official wrap-up of Matthew. And after Matthew, I will be going to... Um, I don't know... I know people commented for Matthew, but I think someone... There were two people commenting for some other guy. I don't know if it was Sam or James. That's why I'm not saying it. But I will look back and then I'll tell you guys the next episode of who I will be pursuing next. Yeah. Excited, right? I'm pretty excited. I really like the storyline of Matthews. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful and I'll catch you guys in the next one.